Hey there, StarCraft fans! It's Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Red War Remastered! Today, gonna be a Patreon cast on patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin between Shuttle and Hero here on Circuit Breakers. If you're watching this the week of May the 28th, thank you very much for supporting me at patreon.com slash Falcon Paladin for at least $1 a month. You get to watch this ad free as well as three other casts every month ad-free. If you're interested in watching the cast ad-free on Patreon.com, go ahead and sign up over there. And if you're uncomfortable signing up with Patreon because it's another website that you're not familiar with, you can go ahead and hit the join button and support me right through YouTube as well. Alright, so top right-hand corner, we have a brown zerg player. It is Hero! And in the bottom right, we've got Shuttle. Man, Shuttle named himself Eyewater because he gets tears from nerds all the time. All the time with his excellent, disgustingly good Protoss play. I gotta tell you, I feel like Shuttle is probably favored in this matchup. Hero's an excellent Zerg player, but Shuttle, he just seems to win. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what else to tell you. He just seems to win. It's an overpool play from Hero. I, someone needs to go through all of the shuttle games on my channel, which you can actually do by just searching shuttle uh, just at my YouTube channel page, which is youtube.com slash Falcon Paladin. Pretty easy to find. And then it's maybe going through and clicking and looking at the end of all of them because I really feel like his win percentage rate on the channel is about 90%. It's not what it is in real life, but considering I cast the longer macro games, he's exceptionally good in mid to late game scenarios. Maybe he dies a lot to early game stuff Right? Like, maybe he gets super early pooled and dies and that's his weakness, but I, I don't... I don't see it. I really don't see it happening. Anyway, basically by telling the time of that natural hatch, he knows. That wasn't a pool first play, it was an over pool. So there are some lings on the way, but they're not already out, so I don't have to, like, super panic about walling off over here. But we'll send a probe down, we'll just kind of casually toss up a cannon. Casually take a Nexus. This probe's job is to see how many lings are actually going to be made. It's two, but Shuttle doesn't know that yet, right? There could definitely be like six more lings in production behind these two. Doesn't know. Unaware. And actually not sticking around to find out either. He wants to get back in there. There we go. About face. About face. We want to see what's going on. Did you cancel the natural? No, that's good information to have. Sometimes they cancel natural. There's a one base all in that you thought was just a two base, but no. Sneaky. <gasps> Super fast third two. I love this sub three minute third base from Hero. I am over the moon about that. Okay, I saw I saw the drone go over there. I thought he was just scouting, but nope. Nope. Recognize this as a forge fast expand. It's going to be really super hard for Shuttle to punish this because he went for a fairly greedy macro style opening. So guess what? You can do that too, Zerg players, right? If you scout a Nexus first play or a Forge expand on your ladder experiences, then by all means, throw down that third hatchery sub three minutes. You'll be fine. You won't die. It's the Falcon guarantee. Because look at this. What can the Protoss do? Doesn't even have a gateway yet. Okay, just got a gateway at 330. So even if they make a Zealot and A move it over to your third base, you can have a sunken up there. You can have four lings over there ready to go. It's really not difficult to handle a single zealot. And if they wait for more, then that's even more time for you to get hydras out, to get the lurker aspect up, to get another sunken up at the third base if necessary. Again, definitely put evolution chambers in front of your sunkens or another macro hatch maybe in front of your sunkens so that the zealots can't just get a surround on them and kill them fast, etc., etc. You've seen this. You know how this matchup works for sure. So yeah, there is a Zealot heading over. Why not, honestly? Because if you don't send this, Hero doesn't have to make anything but drones for the first five minutes of the game. So Zealot comes up. There are a couple Hydras on the way. Actually, Zealot is just a feint. Just a feint. Which, again, I really, really feel like more Protoss and Terran players should do. Because again, the whole basis of Zerg is that they really just want to drone their faces off until they need stuff. Right? When do they need Hydralisks? They'll start making Hydras. They don't make them early because it hurts their economy. But if you faint on them, right? You take an army, you move it up, you make it make the Zerg feel like an attack is coming. And then, once they make stuff that they don't want to make because they'd rather be making drones, you turn around and go home. And then the Zerg player is kind of messed up on their economy and you didn't lose anything. 
Right? You didn't walk into something where you lost everything because they made a huge army. No, you just pull back home. And then maybe the Zerg is forced into counterattacking. I'm not saying that's what happened here, because I don't think it is. But it totally could happen, especially at the lower levels of these games. So, cannons on the front of the wall because Shuttle is tired of Hydra sitting back here and hammering his front buildings without any recourse at all. Hydras have the range upgrade. Zealot legs are on the way, going for a lair here. And fourth base timing is real from Hero. So, this is a game where Shuttle needs to get some damage done, or four basing Hero is just going to murder him. So we're definitely going for Storm, right? It's early Hydra. It's a lot of Hydras out of Hero, but also making drones right now, right? This probe finally gets killed. Finally. Like, great scouting shuttle, honestly. What are these drones doing up here other than expanding? I guess I wanted to get a Spire first. Mm, I guess if it's not a Stargate opening, Mutalisks are suddenly about 8,000 times better. Oh, is Hero going to win with Mutas? Dude, we've seen this. We've seen games like this before. It's possible, man. It is possible that Shuttle prepares for all of the Hydralisks known to man with Lurker support. And then suddenly, like, 12 Mutalisks show up, cannon down, everybody dies, and everybody dies over here, right? So the Zealots are like, well, better for some kind of an issue here. Oh, out in the open here, too. Uh, bad. Bad for the Hydras. Don't do that. Here we go. Setting up Sunkins behind a macro hatch in an evolution chamber. The Sunkins need to finish approximately now for Hero to be remotely comfortable with this. And there we go. So yes, handful of Lings with some Hydras. Two Sunkins behind a wall. Excellent. Get on out of there. Shuttle? Maybe the third base is more open in that kind of attack. Nope. Two Sunkins are already there. Uh, an evolution chamber would be fantastic. And we're just going to macro hatch. Again, providing a buffer for the Sunkins is required, and it is mutilist production. But hang on. Stargate is starting, and Air Weapons is getting researched, but the Stargate's not done yet. So it's a race right now. Can Shuttle get out enough? Wow, get out enough Corsairs to deal with the mutilisks that are in production. Because Hero's not going crazy on Lurkers. Actually, no Lurkers at all. Not going crazy on Hydros, and not even bothering with the Lurker aspect upgrade here. So this is interesting. I like this a lot. Extra gateways in production, uh, Stargate finishing up, but the Mutas are out, man. The Mutas are coming. What do you have to deal with it? You're trying to make a cannon. He knows. I don't know how he knows, other than he knows there aren't any Lurkers out, and so the other option is that Mutalisks show up and cause you great mental pain and emotional grief. Yeah, that cannon's not finishing. This base is completely shut down for the foreseeable future. There's a Corsair on the way. Not here yet. There's an Archon on the way. It is technically here. I don't know where it is. Uh, it's in the natural base. That's cool. Uh, these Mutalisks are raining terror upon the probes here. Shuttle has a lower probe count than Hero does right now. Oh, that was a ton of splash damage, though. Those Mutas were all stacked up. Goodbye, probe. And the Corsair got some direct hits on there. The Archon might have got a couple swipes on there, too. That splash damage is good stuff. All right, so Shuttle recognized what was happening in time to get a Corsair and an Archon out. Lost a few probes, yes. Kinda stuck on two bases for now, yes. And the fourth base is on the way from Hero. So remember when I was like, Shuttle is unstoppable? I, I, oh, I, technically what I said was that he probably has a 90% win rate on this channel, which could still be true and he could still lose this game because this is only one of many games that I've cast of his. Anyway. Pretty intense at this stage. I'm feeling about the scourge out. Feeling, I'm feeling good for Hero here. I am. He's at even supply at nine minutes, which is bad. It is bad for Shuttle that this is the case right now. Worker count is more for the Zerg player. Also bad. Oh, this third gas comes up. Lurker aspect being researched. The tech switching here from Hero is impressive. I'm going to give it an impressive label. The fact that he went into Hydras, into Mutalisks, back into Lurker play, and Shuttle's kind of like, well, Storms and Archons are pretty good against all of the things that Zerk can do mid-game. So let's do that. Let's just have Storms available in case a million Hydras and Lurkers show up. Let's have some Corsairs in case it is continued Mutalisk production. 
And uh, hope we're not getting out expanded like a crazy person because we are. I mean, look at this. Look at this. There's a macro hatch coming up at the fourth base. I don't know what this drone is doing other than it probably should be getting to work. But again, even the professional players don't always immediately put their things to work. We're going to macro hatch that too. Dude, Hero's going for some kind of a big time, big time attack here. He's at 60 workers. He's getting a queen's nest. Double evolution chamber. Lurkers are already out. What he probably needs more than anything is a hive at this stage of the game, which is the queen's nest, right? Because eventually, if you don't have Dark Swarm or Plague, you're just going to lose this game. But Hero knows that. Hero is a very, 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 very smart Zerg player. Corsairs are looking for damage up here towards the natural base, but there should be Corsairs around here somewhere. Or, you know, just a handful of Hydralisks. Ooh, two Overlords died. Oh, and a Spore, even. Wow, that was a lot of Overlords dead. That splash damage counted for a lot more than I expected it to. Uh, Hero just got knocked down to 55 supply. Holy crap! That was incredibly damaging. Okay, that's what Shuttle needed. What Shuttle needed to get back in this game was to murder about six Overlords, drop Hero into the Stone Age of overall supply. He's making ten Overlords at a time. He'll recover from this pretty much instantaneously. Still slows him down. It's still resources he has to spend on replacing Overlords. He would rather not spend on replacing Overlords. You'll notice the Spore did not kill any of the Corsairs. Uh, so again, having a Corsair is not like a huge deterrent for Corsairs, but I still feel like it's better than nothing. And if you are a lower level Protoss player, just have a Protoss, a Zerg player, have a Spore at each of your bases. I know it's a drone. I know every one of those is a drone, then that sucks. Well, like, just dissuading Corsair attacks is pretty good stuff. I don't know. Scourger in production, uh, working on missile attack upgrade, uh, faster hydralisk movement, which they didn't have already, which I thought I saw that researching like 10 minutes ago. But nope. And the shuttle's trying to get stuff done. Trying to go for a storm drop. But hydras are strategically and well placed here at the natural base to make sure that doesn't happen. The filer mound is on the way. Third base is up. Single lurker gets eviscerated. Muta's going after this pylon. Scourge, nope! Not enough Scourge to get through that many Corsair attacks. That's eight, man. That is eight Corsairs. Yeah, I, I mean, if the Corsairs are directly engaging with your Scourge as they're coming at you, four is not going to work. Six isn't going to work. You got to flank them when they're attacking something else. Oh my gosh. Or have like 20, and then maybe you can connect with these guys. Yeah, man, Shuttle's just... <laughs> he was in a bad place. He was. He dug himself out of that bad place by getting a third and a fourth base up. But Hero has more supply now. He's got a lot of things. And sometimes... Okay. The Corsair's flying over a Hydralisk ball. They got the scout off, though. That's important. So bring everybody. Bring the charge lots. The speedy lots with their plus two attack. Bring them in. Bring the High Templar. I don't... Do we not have any High Templar here, ladies and gentlemen? Oh, uh, this is bad. This is a abandoned ship scenario for shuttle. Yes, it definitely is. Yeah, cannons, no. Not against this onslaught of Hydras and Zerglings. Meanwhile, Corsair's on the... Uh, they're doing it again. They just dropped Hero down to 96 total supply. Supply blocking him in the next week. I mean, they're taking hits for it. They're paying for it for sure. Where are the High Templar? Did he turn all of his High Templar into Archons? <gasps> he might have turned all of his High Templar into Archons. That seems like a problem if your uh, opponent is going for all of the Hydralisks that he can make right now. Uh, yeah, that's not good. That is really not good. That Archon is dead. I mean, he doesn't want to admit that he's dead, and he's still fighting. He's got six kills. Okay, High Templar have arrived. I guess they're probably in this here shuttle, if I had to guess. Lurker in range of a cannon isn't going to be super great. Shuttle holds off. He loses his fourth base, which is a problem, but the third base is still alive. This would have been GG if he lost this one, so no. We're not there yet. Plague's on the way. Corsair count whittled down just a little bit. Overlords moving out for vision, just like risking their lives that the Corsairs are going to wander by and murder them all. Ooh, ow, ow. These all previously injured 
zealots? It must be because they're dying really fast to that lurker and like seven hydras. Yeah, previous previous damage. It's an issue. Ooh, a D couple DTs out here. Did you bring Overlord? You didn't, because my Corsairs killed all of them. <laughs> That's what Shuttle said, but in Korean. So, all right. Uh, everyone here is going to die to Dark Templar, which is a bit of a bummer. This DT made it all the way up to this fifth base. Of course, we don't have a Spore here either. I don't know what the Zealots are really going to do necessarily, but the Corsairs are killing Overlords. This is a good game. Uh, this is going to classify this one a good game. Oh my gosh. Wow, he plagued to reveal that Dark Templar, but plagued like all of these Zerglings and this Hydralisk too. Plague is friendly splash. Always remember. So is Ensnare, actually. And not a supply block, but close. Hero not happy about all the effect that these Corsairs are having today. Dragoon production is on the way. Replacing the fourth base here is Shuttle, but... But, heroes up, 166 to 151 supply. Ling's running in to die is not great. Do not bring overlords again. You got one here. There's one here. Bring the overlord over. You know there are DTs down here, hero. You know there are DTs around here. Nice sneak attack plague on the right side. Wow, that was a sneaky, sneaky defiler. And he's escaping. Look at him waddle. Wiggle, he wiggled his way. So they move by like snake method, right? Of just wiggling. They don't have feet or legs or claws or anything like that. I don't think they do. That's a lot of lurkers. So how do you defend against that many lurkers? Um, Dragoons are amazing at it, actually. You don't have any Dark Swarm to toss down on these guys. They'll die pretty quickly to Dragoons. Uh, especially with plus three attack. And especially if you storm the crap out of the eggs before they finish. Oh, no! That was so disastrous for Hero! Oh, uh, Plague ooh, gets tossed down, but again, I always say you gotta have the army to finish off the Plague Protoss units. If you just Plague them and nothing's bothering them, they're okay with this. I mean, it sucks they're permanently injured, but other than that, they're fine. Okay, look. I think Hero just needs to get this thing together. He's gotta get some Plague down, some Dark Swarm on top of the Lurkers, maybe instead of... To the side, I mean, it was the storms that really caused the problems, not the not the Dragoons, in all fairness, so it wouldn't have helped all that much, but Heroes at 175 supply, Shuttles at 163. 63. Six base? Yeah, six base on the way from Hero. He's doing all right. He's staying about two bases ahead. Yeah, so this Defiler is key to everything Hero wants to do here. And it's going to be a Dark Swarm with a ton of Zerglings. And soon, and there's the Dark Swarm. Alright, but there's Reavers in the mix here, so that's not good. Legu Storm! Dark Swarm! Uh, the Lings aren't doing super well here, actually. The Zealots are hiding inside the Dark Swarm from the Hydralisk attacks, which is great. But Zerglings trading pretty effectively with them. I don't know. This is too much Protoss down here. It just, the entire army is here to defend. They are able to arri arrive in time. The Defilers get wiped out. The Defilers were important. But too many Zealots down there for Lings just to wipe this base out. If the Zealots weren't here, that was GG, man. The Reavers, too. Let's not, let's not pretend the Reavers had nothing to do with this. Uh, another Dark Swarm comes up. Another Plague. Ooh, ah, oh, the buildings. The buildings getting plagued is never good. Oh, this reminds me of that epic game I had between Calm and somebody else a couple weeks ago. Or maybe like a, two months ago now, but... Oh, we've when Lurker's in here. I just... I don't know, man. That was about a 40-plus minute ZVP. That was absolutely nonstop insane. If you didn't watch it, you should. Ask me for a link to it. I'll give you a link if you missed it. But it came down to this, like, final battle. Anyway. Let's not spoil things. But you know what I'm talking about if you saw that game, right? If you clicked on that. So we're still even supply in about 20 minutes, which still is not great for shuttle. It's 77 drones, which means that even if Hero has a bad engagement or two, he should be okay. That said, shuttle's a wizard. He is master of all things splash damage. The Archons, the Storm, 
the reavers inside the shuttle. Again, shuttle's name is shuttle. So man, so the shuttle itself is plagued and the reavers are plagued. Uh, this is not exactly, I don't think shuttle wanted to set up for this, you guys. But he's sort of getting mobbed out here in the middle of the map from all angles. Storm at the top side, dodging it pretty effectively. Another fantastic plague on these units, though. Just, again, this is not working particularly well for Hero. The Storm combined with the Zealots with speed, plus three attack, and plus one armor. Hero is still up 146 to 121 supply. Like, he's just able to make 15 pairs of Zerglings because he's got a giant bank and Shuttle doesn't. So, I mean, this is Shuttle trying to make the best of a bad situation. He can definitely still win this game. But it just, it's getting harder for him. I don't, I don't want to say all the time, but, oh boy. So that Reaver dies. Flank, oh, from the south side, from the right side, it's a true 360 attack out of Hero. And there are so many dead Zerg units, but the Protoss units are dwindling exceptionally quickly. That is so many dead hiders. But no, there's your GG and shuttle taps out. Hero is your winner in 21 minutes and 17 seconds. Ho, oh, yeah. I mean, look, you generally knew if an elite Zerg player and elite Protoss player are challenging each other and it's even supply at about nine or 10 minutes, that's never good for the Protoss. It really isn't. And I just, I think it came down to that early game, right? He made the Hydras. He forced Shuttle to prepare for a big Hydralisk attack. He tech switched into Mutalisks, got a few probe kills, forced Shuttle into a Stargate-style play, and then got out of the Mutalisk business, went back into Hydras and Lurkers. All the meantime, he's preparing nicely to get a third base up, or get a fourth base up, got a fifth and a sixth and a seventh base up, really didn't lose too many drones today either, rebuffed that Shuttle attack that was trying to storm drop up here at his natural base, and it was really Shuttle that spent most of the game on his back foot. And that's how you win games as Zerg. Is you gotta keep... Oh my gosh, he was making 14 Ultralisks at once. No wonder Shuttle tapped out. I mean, he didn't have a lot going on. But still, 14 Ultralisks at once is bananas. Yeah. But again, that's how most of these Brood War games go, right? StarCraft in general. If you're on the defensive all the time, especially as a Zerg player you're probably not going to win, right? If you're just constantly receiving wave after wave of attack, you're not that suited for defense necessarily, and you're going to crumble eventually. Same thing for Protoss. If they're constantly under attack on every one of their bases, and every one of the bases coming under attack, even if you defend it well most of the time, you're not out there slowing down the Zerg player. You're not storm dropping. You're not sending too many DTs in. I guess one DT got up in here and got some kills, but other than that, yeah, you're not slowing down the Zerg. He's at 79 workers. He's a happy Zerg, and that is a dangerous, dangerous Zerg to play against. So at the end of the day, 156,000 points for Shuttle, 165,000 points for Hero. And the Zerg player did end up losing 424 units, which is a lot, but if you produce 650 and your opponent only produces 200, the math works out. Yeah, yes, yes it does. Resources... I mean, yeah, if you're going to beat Shuttle this handily, the resources tab has to look like this. Double the gas, double the minerals. Okay, a third more of the minerals. And like 40% more on total spent. That's That'll do it. Shuttle still looked awful scary. A lot of situations there. Great storms, great reaver attacks. But if the Zerg player can just overwhelm you and throw army after army after army at you, eventually all of your, all of your splash damage is not going to be enough. And it wasn't enough in the end, and Hero comes out on top. <sighs> All right. Well, that right there is gonna be it from me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming at you with yet another edition of StarCraft Brood War Remastered and a Patreon cast. Go ahead, hit that like button, hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching, and you take care of yourself.